Hello guys, I'm here to review the Hobby Zone Super Cub. Very great plane for only uh, $200. It's very well built, can survive many crashes, and also just well-rounded plane. Very easy to fly for beginners, but it also can, uh, can withstand loops and sharp dives for the more experienced flyers. So right out of the box, you will receive a DX 4E Spectrum controller, a, uh, a battery, but um, this is not the one that will come with it, but a uh, standard battery uh, comes with this clip, which can be used on many planes, and I'm pretty sure it is a uh, 1,300 milliamps, which will give you about 10 minutes of flight time on high power and about 15 on low power. Uh, inside, everything comes with it. You have your servo. In the back, you have two of those, one for your elevators and one for your rudder. So you don't need to go buying any servos. Those are very well protected by Z-Foam. You will then have your receiver, which comes with ports for all of your, um, all of your needed parts, I guess. But it can also, you can add more, it has more plugins for like Aliens and things like that. It also comes with an X port, so you can plug in your droppers and night flights, which I will cover later in the video if you do not know what those are. The propeller that comes standard is much smaller. It's just a 9x6 regular propeller. The one that I have on right now, which I recommend you buy, is a, um, it's a 10x8. It, um, it, uses much, it uses much more battery than the standard but it also comes but it's also provides much more power but it'll drain the battery pretty quickly so just be aware if you're going to use that to um to make to not fly it as high one important thing that the super cub does come with is these uh act holes i guess they are it's called anti anti-crash technology and it's used so if your plane is going too high up or too high or too fast down, the uh, the technology will correct itself and bring it back to level. It will not bring it. It'll not avoid objects for you, but it will prevent you from spiraling out of control for a bit. Now, what that does is it, spin, it sends a beam out of here and a beam out of here, and it'll receive them. And if those and if those sensors, I guess, sense that this one is not coming back in meaning it's too high, then it will bend over then bring it down. And and then if this one is too high, then it'll bring that down. Very useful. I only use that though if I'm taking off in very windy conditions and so it will not throw my plane around as much. Um, one problem is if you, you cannot do your flips if you're gonna do that. So the way you control that on and off is with your controller right here at the top where it says uh, it says A ACT slash AUX, which um, many people just consider this a uh, like a um, like a sport kind of thing. Like if you're gonna do um, flips and things, that's how you control. It. What's really just used for if you're a beginner, you should use it. If you're not, you really shouldn't. So what you do is uh, flip the knob up, that is off. Flip it down, and it's now back. Now it's back on. Um, now. When you flip it on, when you flip it off, it'll just turn everything off. And one other way, if you want to turn it off, is on the receiver. It, you have these plugins for it says ACT and it says top and bottom. You can just unplug those and it'll stop giving power to them. They will not work anymore. Um, now let's talk about export because not many planes have that and not many people know what that is. So on your receiver, which I'm gonna have to plug in, you have this cord that's gonna come from the bottom. It looks. It comes from little. It comes from where your battery is. Now, on your receiver, you said is this thing says X. It, it doesn't say export, but it has the symbol for export, which it's a box with an X in the middle, and then it says X, and it, and it says port at the bottom. So, now if you plug our battery in, so now let's turn our controller on. So, at the bottom here, you're going to see a little knob plug-in right here. Now, what that knob does is if you have an export, 
Now they have these things called night flyers, which are lights you can ta you can attach so they can see them at night. They have a uh, fighting module so you can shoot, I guess, lasers at other planes and knock them out of the sky. Um, but what I use is the dropping module. Now what it does is just it's a little dropper with a uh, magnet on it, and it's electromagnet. So when it wants to, it can stop creating uh, magnetism between the two and drops it. So what it does. There's a little bar right there, and it just hooks right in like that. You then take your plug that comes with it, bring it over to the port on the bottom, and just plug it in like that. Well, I got tape in front of mine, so let's get that out of the way. I use that to, the tape is for my GoPro when I want to, um, because I hot glue my, gro my GoPro onto it. That's how I use it. So it just plugs in just like that. No snapping, just slides right in. Now, what we should be able to do is if we take, if we throw, we, we should be able, we give it some throttle. Now the magnetism should be working. Yep, okay, so it should hold in place. And at the, I'm gonna slide, move this. On the top, you have this little button. It says trainer bind. It's also the export user. So if you push that button, it'll then release the magnet. Now, you can use that for many things, like um, it comes with a parachute man, which can be dropped. You, I guess you could drop cameras, anything. Um, and then while we're down here, back here, these that little slide is for the um, floats. If you purchase those, that's what those are for. I don't, I don't have them because I don't really live near many lakes or streams. There, um, you can also use floats for snow which I don't get either. So, uh, that's about that for the inside and the export. Okay, so now on to the controller. The controller has two knobs at the top, like I said. One of them is for ACT. The right one is for rate. Now rate is used for how fast or how far your servers and engines will put be pushed on if you use your, um, your uh, knobs. So if you have it on high, then your um your plane will push your I guess uh your rudders and elevators farther. So you will react your plane will move up faster and slower. Now if you use um slow or low in this case, then it, it won't push them as far but it'll still react with the same time. It just won't it won't push it down or up or side to side as fast. It also caused the um, the uh, plane's engine to not run as fast. Um, down here you can see the trim slides for every. Oh, didn't want to turn that on. You can see the trim slides. Everything. They have um, grooves so they can be stuck in, and um, it has this little um, right here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, right there. It's so you can plug in your um. So you can plug in your little necklace to hold it in, or lanyard, I guess, to so you don't drop it mid-flight. Um, <clears throat> the for your throttle, it has grooves so you can push it up, and it'll stay. And if you, it'll so you don't have to have constant pushing up out on that. But on the rudder and elevators, it will always snap back to the center. Um. You have your reversings and inverse switches down here. It goes um, throttle, aliens, uh, elevators, and rudder, which will just control on what you do. So in this case, pull down, pull down, and your plane's nose will go up. But if you switch it to reverse, pull down, and your plane's nose will go down. I do not use that because I have learned to fly using, I guess, the normal controls. <clears throat> Sorry, I've been sick all week. So, um, when you first turn your plane on, you hear that little jingle, which just tells you that the battery is running and everything is good. Up top, you will see this light for so the four flight from the left means you have full battery. The third means that you have somewhat battery, but it's draining. Then. The second, I mean, from, yeah, second from the left means you uh, probably want to get some power in there. And then 
the the farthest one to the left is red and we'll start blinking and making a beeping noise and when it does that it means it will not power your plane and will eventually shut itself off now the blink the blinking noise and the red flashing light will uh, I guess tell you that you're running out of power and one more thing about running out of power is with the plane and its ACT when the battery uh, reaches a critical point and how much juice it has in it and it's low it's so low that you're endangering the uh, lithium battery <clears throat> and, in, and and guess I guess threatening it to catch on fire it will shut the engines off and only give you th um, elevators and uh, elevators and rudder power now it's good in some cases I guess because it still gives you the uh, throttle it still gives you the uh, rudders and elevators but some points it just it, it, it um when you have no thrust it's, it becomes hard to control especially if there's wind and I mean it's a key feature so your plane doesn't catch on fire midair okay so um now let's just let's go to the back which to the um wings they are still they have the blue color scheme like the rest of the plane they are 47 inches long very big compared to the rest of the plane actually yeah they're about a foot longer than the entire plane so um now the key thing is these little plastic bits right here don't know if you can see that but there's plastic yeah right here and that'll protect it from repeated rubber band usage because this plane is held on using four rubber bands, which is, which they come with, and with four it's pretty good. But I guess, I mean, I use six. I use um, I do two more going vertically like this, just because I've had wobbling problems in the past. And other than that, there's not much to talk about the wings, besides. They do come with a um, piece of plastic, which will run from this hook, a holder there, to the plane. So when the plane starts uh, moving and the wind will start pushing the wings back, those will hold them in place and provide optimal lift. <coughs> um, now the tail, everything is all, all are proportional, so the servos will push them back and forth. It does come with a, uh, a wheel right here. I lost mine in a crash, so I have to replace that. But the good thing about the wheel is when you're taking off, it will con the rudder control will move the wheel back and forth, so it makes it much easier take off and landing. So you don't have to manually turn the plane around; the wheel will just steer steer it in and out. And um, the engine is a 480 brushless, which will provide some lift, but it will not do verticals, which most electric planes will not vertical but this one will provide lift uh, it does not use uh, it, it, is ha it does have a lower battery life than I would like but like all RC planes you can upgrade them and well I guess with a 2000 uh, milliamp you can get much longer um, that's about it for the Super Cub I would like to thank you for watching, for watching this video and remember to rate, comment, and subscribe